What if you need to make some changes to your application? You could go the manual route. You could make these changes yourself. You could use the IDE to refactor some things, but this is a very manual process. Is this going to scale across two, five, 10, 100 applications? Probably not. Now you could automate this somehow. You can kind of hack together your own scripts and write these scripts to automate this process and change all of the things across your applications, but we're not gonna do that. We are going to use a project called Open Rewrite, and that's what we're gonna look at today. Open Rewrite includes these scripts, if you will. We're, we're gonna call them recipes. And these recipes are a way to go ahead and make a particular change across your application. Once you have all this figured out in one app, you can kind of script this for the rest of your app using this collection of recipes. That's because these recipes can be chained together, if you will. So we're gonna look at a couple different examples today. We'll talk about a simple example in Java, but I also really wanna take a look at this for Spring. If you are on something like Spring Boot 2.7 and you wanna to get to 3.2, how do we do it? Well, we can move from one recipe to like 3.0 and then to 3.1 and then to 3.2. We can automate this process. We can do it in one of our apps. And then when we get that kind of secret sauce figured out, we can go ahead and push this to other apps and, and really make some headway on upgrading to the latest and greatest. So here I am at the uh, open rewrite, docs.openrewrite.org. There's a nice introduction. There's a nice video. There is a way to get started. So if I go into run in recipes and I look at the quick start, here are some prerequisites. You can clone a project and test it out here. Um, you can add a rewrite Maven plugin or a rewrite Gradle plugin to your project. This will allow you to basically type in a Maven command and run a particular recipe. That's fine and dandy. That works. That's going to be needed like when we get into like uh, trying to automate this across many, many repositories. But there's also a way to basically um, do this from the IDE now. So here's some getting started from this. What I'm gonna show you today is we're gonna use IntelliJ. We're gonna add some recipes into a directory, and then I'll show you how you can run these right from the IDE. This is really cool. I think this gives you that visual of just being able to see it uh, in your IDE. So, I really like this approach and I think you will too. With that, let's head over to IntelliJ IDEA and talk through some of these recipes. All right, so here I am in my application. I will put all of the source code for this example into a repository and you can find that below. I have this silly, this is a Spring Boot app. Let's start there actually. Um, so I have a Spring Boot app. This is written in using 2.7.x. We are using Java 8. And we just have things like the Spring Boot Starter Web, Spring Boot Starter Validation, not a whole lot going on here. But if you're just a Java developer and you don't use Spring, this will be helpful too. We're gonna start with more of a simple Java example. So I have this silly string calculator. And this has some methods for adding and subtracting based on a string. So you could pass in a string, something that looks like this. You could say add uh, three, and, or I'm sorry, with a string that is like three and one, and it will um, split that and use the three and the one, turn them into numbers and add them together. So I have this silly class and I wanna be able to write some tests for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a test. We'll call this the spring string calculator test. And in here I will say, let's go ahead and write a test. Um, this uh, should, sorry, should add two string numbers, right? Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, so all we're saying here, and I wanna do this because we're gonna run a recipe against that. So I want to assert that um, 3 and 1 equals 4. And uh, it does. And then I'll just add one more. So again, I want to do um, assertions dot, uh, assert equals, and that should run. And that will go ahead and pass as well. Okay, so now I have two tests. 
this first recipe is going to be extremely simple, but hey, we gotta walk before we can run, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna create a new uh, directory here in my resources. I'm going to call this recipes. Now I will point out that I am using the latest beta of IntelliJ. This is 2024.1 beta. There is a plugin for Open Rewrite. If you are before this version, you have to manually install this plugin yourself. If you are in the beta or further, this is actually bundled in IntelliJ now, which I find really exciting. So the plugin is what is going to make this happen. But now we can go back to the Open Rewrite site. We can go ahead and um, check out the recipe catalog. So there are a bunch of recipes in here. So I want to go ahead and pick Java. All right, so here are a bunch of Java recipes that you can look for. You can also do a search from here. I know that the one I'm looking for is called use static import, and then this is for the JUnit Jupyter assertions. So you can go to this um, page and kind of find out more about the recipe. It says always use static imports for assertion methods. And that's what we've done. Remember, we've, we're using the fully qualified class and method name. We want to remove that and use the static import. So here's the recipe source. If you want to like see how this was written to make this work, here's the usage. So if you're using Gradle or Maven, uh, you can include this in your palm and then you can just run a Maven command to run it. There's also a definition. So I will say not all recipes have a definition, but um, they're easy to kind of construct. They're just YAML. Um, so here's what that looks like. So what I would do is copy this and then I'm going to go back to um, my IDE and under recipes and resources, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to say use static uh, import.yaml and inside of there I am going to uh, pop paste this code in. So now I am using this name as the recipe name. I don't think this matters. You can probably name it whatever you want, but I like to keep these the same. So now that this is in place, what I would probably do in the real world, so again, this isn't the real world, this is the demo world where I don't have to do that. I would go in and create a new branch and this would be like a rewrite feature branch, right? Like I'm trying to uh, update all of the static imports. I'm just gonna do this in the main branch, um, but that's okay. So we can run this. We can also run, uh, right click on this and modify our options. So if you wanted to do something like just do a dry run at first, um, you could do that. Um, or you can, um, like you could do a whole bunch of different things. I don't think this is, I don't know why our options aren't there, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, open rewrite version, exclusion, active, dry run. Okay, so yeah, so we could do all of that as different things from there, but I just wanna run this recipe. And ultimately what this should do is in my test, it should remove this assertions dot and use the static import. So let's go ahead and run this and see if that works. All right, so we have a success. You can see changes have been made to string calculator test, and here are the changes. Now, if you do a dry run, it will basically stick a patch file in the target open rewrite folder. But we've actually said, just go ahead and make those changes for us. And now, if we look at this, we can see the changes to the string calculator test. Um, it went ahead and, oh, this is probably from, me doing that before. Let's go ahead and open this up. Now you can see that the assertion that is gone and we've added uh, a static import for that. So recipe number one has been done. So that's pretty cool. So now what we can do is I'm going to um, copy and paste a few recipes in here and uh, we'll talk about them in a second. All right, so now we have these three new recipes in here, and these are for upgrading Spring Boot. I got these right off the Open Rewrite website, um, and these you can go ahead and copy from there as well. You can see these are a little bit more complicated, though, so there's some more things going on. You see a recipe list, so we can start to chain together recipes. Um, and now you'll notice I have 3.0, 3.1, and 3.2. If you are upgrading from something like Spring Boot 2.7, it is advised to make the jump to 3.0, 
make the jump to Java 17 if you haven't yet. Then go ahead and make the jump to 3.1 and then 3.2. Going from 2.7 to 3.2 might be a very big jump. And if your application has a bunch of things going on, you'll probably want to take this one step at a time. So you'll see that it has uh, multiple recipes. Hey, upgrading to Spring Boot 2.7, make insurance on the latest there. Um, renew, enable, uh, remove, enable batch processing upgrade to Java 17. So that's a requirement. So it's going to make you upgrade to Java 17. Um, it has some things around time leaf and all of the things that you might have to consider in moving. One of those is like, hey, properties change between 2.7 and 3. How can I upgrade those? Spring Cloud, Spring Security. There are a bunch of changes in Spring Security 6. So as you can see, just this one recipe to upgrade to 3.0 is pretty involved. Now, I have probably the most basic application, so not a lot is going to change, but that's okay. We're just taking a look at how to run these recipes and how to add them to our project. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run the um, upgrade here uh, to 3.0, and we'll see what happens. Um, I've seen this before. I got a little error here, and that's okay. And a whole bunch of stuff went on. Um, it went to look through a whole bunch of things. And now we'll take a look at this. So um, I want to go ahead and look at the commit. And really, the biggest thing that happened here was in the palm. You can see that we moved from 2.7.6 to 3.0. Uh, you could see that we moved from Java 8 to Java 17 here. And then we just had a group ID change here. So cool, uh, that was able to uh, do some things. Again, very simple app, but that's okay. Uh, let's take a look at one more thing. I think the to-do app changed, right? Or the to-do class. I had a normal to-do class in here and we were using um, the not empty and we were importing uh, the javax.validation. And now we're importing the jakarta.validation. So it knew as part of that upgrade process that, hey, anywhere we're using JavaX um, from Java EE, we need to upgrade that to jakarta. So that was part of that migration as well. So really cool. So now when you're done with 3.0, uh, you can go to 3.1. So if we wanted to, we can come through and run this one and then run this one. So 3.2 would get us up to JDK. I think there's probably a way to move to JDK 21, but I think this is just moving to 3.2. All right, so I think that's really all I wanted to show. You may see a lot of examples out there where you have to run the Maven uh, command from the command line. And I know that can get a little bit confusing. For me, I'm much more of a visual person. Being able to see the recipe right here in my IDE along with what it's supposed to do, uh, then seeing that output on the uh, console, for me, that kind of like triggers everything and I know what's going on. So I really like that this plugin is now bundled into IntelliJ and you get the little icon over there. You can see that it's an open rewrite recipe. And again, this is the collection of recipes from Open Rewrite. You can find other rewrite recipes out there. You can create your own for your own organization. If you have things going on that you are trying to automate, create your own recipes, test them out right here in your ID. Everybody is a winner. So I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, friends, do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding.